Praise the Lord. This is Jonathan. This is part of the Stay the Way podcast. I do this each and every day because Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And the only way to the Father, the only way into heaven, is through the Son. That's through Jesus. And so if you don't know him, I hope you'll change that today by asking him to be your Savior and Lord. Now, the purpose of this today is that it's the 30th of August, and so we'd be focused on Proverbs chapter 30, simply matching a proverb up with the chapter in the book. So it's the 30th, we'll be in chapter 30. Tomorrow will be the 31st, we'll be in chapter 31. Yes. And so you know how to read ahead. And if you want, you certainly can, and then come back and we'll, we'll challenge uh, the word together. And so the goal is that I would approach the word of God to OIA. So to observe what it says, to interpret, OI, to interpret it. So what does it mean? And then A is application, OIA. Application means what does it mean to me? What do I, how do I put hands and feet on this and change my life so that my life is representative of the son of God in me? So that's, that's Jesus and the Holy Spirit working in me that I might be completely different than what I was before. Now, why is this important? Because I used to be a dirty, awful, vomitous, carnal flesh bag of pus called a human being. And I would lie, cheat and steal. And I don't do that anymore. And it's not because I, I don't want to. It's because I don't have to. And so when I say that, it means I used to have to drink and chase women and, and manipulate my employers, to, you know, to get more money and to work less time. And I don't want to do that at all because my relationship with God makes me sure I'll go to heaven when I die. And because of that change in my life, because all of, of the criminal that I was, was forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Now, what does that mean? Well, when he died on the cross, his blood was spilled for you and for I, from you and for me, for everyone. And it says in the Bible that God's desire is that all, not some, not just a particular group of people, all people would come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And it also says that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And when that happens, you want to be on the side of accepting Jesus beforehand. Because if you're showing up late to the game, it's too late. Hell is forever without Jesus. Hell is separation from God forever. It's eternal darkness and you are tormented by your, your passions for eternity. That's what the word of God says. And so I'm, I do this because this fires me up. Always put it on DND. There we go. So I do this each and every day because the word of God is helping me to change and be shaped into a good loving son because I love my father and I want to do what he says. And the only way to learn how to do what he says in a loving way is to read the Bible. So let's apply it. That's the observe what it says, interpret what it means and apply what it is. Okay, let's begin. This is chapter 30, verse one, the words of Augur, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel and Ithiel to Yukal. Okay, well, like, what is that? How do you observe that? Well, there's, let's just say that there's family here and there's prophecy. Now, what is prophecy? Prophecy is a unique situation where the foretelling of the future events can occur. Now, that could be like the Gog and Magog, like in Ezekiel, that Gog is, is literally to the best of our knowledge is Russia and it will come down and invade Israel from the north. Gog and Magog. Magog is most likely China. So that's a thing. But that's that's a prophecy, right? And and of course, then there's near prophecy, which is kind of what this whole proverb talks about. And so let's continue. It says, surely I am more brutish than any man, and I have not the understanding of a man. And neither have I learned wisdom, nor have I the knowledge of the Holy One. And who hath ascended up into heaven or descended, who hath gathered the wind in his fists, and who hath bound the waters in his garment, who hath established the ends of the earth, and what is his name, what is his son's name, if thou canst tell. Now, if you've ever heard about Jesus at all, 
this is about Jesus. Right? This is like it's almost insane. Like who's gone up into heaven or descended into hell in verse four, who has bound the waters in his garments. That's what he did literally on the cross when 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 the soldier came to pierce his side and the blood and water rushed out. And what is his name? Well, his name is Jesus. And what is his son's name? Well, his, his name is God, the father. And what is his son's name is Jesus, who is also God incarnate. And then we also have the Holy Spirit. And, and it says, it's just a question, if thou canst tell. Now, that is a miracle. Just in just these four first verses, it's a miracle that we can read that and have this knowledge that that's Jesus, and he loves us, and he died for us, and he wants to change our lives. Right? Not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. And so let's read on. It says, verse 5, every word of God is pure. There's a song that goes with this. It goes, every word of God is pure. God is pure. God is pure. Every word of God is pure. He's a shield to them that put their trust in him. It's not a really good song, but it's a good children's song. And when my family, we were teaching uh, the children's ministry kids, like there were like two to four year olds, we would sing this and it just, it, it like put it in their mind. And I think it could put it in your mind too. And it's so interesting because if you had to pick one verse from chapter 30, I think, I think this would be the verse that I would share with somebody. Every word of God is pure. There is nothing imperfect. There is nothing impure in the word of God. Now, I'm saying that being the, the, the holy, unadulterated word of God. And I read this specifically. This is the King James version of the Bible. And I like this version because it's got, you know, it's written in 1611. So there's four, what, five, six hundred years of history right? 500 years of history of, of very wise men, people way smarter than me. I'm not saying I'm wise. It just, it just happens to be my name. These really wise men would comb through the Bible, literally read the Bible, literally, and analyze it. And if there was anything that was out of place or wrong, they would say, hey, let's make a note about this. And so that those are interesting because you can go and look at the research, and I have, and I just believe that this is true. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust in him. And so I can trust what God wants to do. Now, if you've been with me before, you'll know there's also this proverb about a shield and a buckler that there are protection, like it's an active protection and you have that available to you. Let's, let's see if we can continue on. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee and be thou, thou find a liar. These two things I require of thee. Deny me not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies and give me neither poverty nor riches feed me with food convenient to me now this is this is pretty important verse 8 if i'm going to observe it what does it say well remove from me vanity and lies well vanity is is everything that's passing it's nothing eternal it's temporary so vanity would be like what car i want to drive it would be what eat, what meal should i eat today right especially in america where we've got more food than and money than we know what to do with have a well the majority of the world is starving and we have this abundance and so i don't worry about what i'm going to eat because god has so blessed us here right the 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 difference and it actually talks about this food so remove far from me vanity that's things that are useless and remove from me lies because we just in our our nature and character is to lie we're great liars that's why it's one of the commandments where it says thou shall not lie right don't lie don't do that and so give me neither poverty nor riches and feed me with food convenient for me. Now, convenient food is an interesting thing. Without getting into a rabbit trail, food that is grown in season has the most nutrient density possible. Now, maybe you don't like spinach and beets and rutabaga, right? Maybe you don't like those, but they grow during the summer so that we can eat them in the fall and possibly, you know, some of the things like root vegetables you can keep into the, into the winter. You eat those in season. And then in the spring, you have your citrus fruits, you have uh, berries, you have you know, early berries, you have things that come. And as you, as you eat food that's convenient, that it's, it's intended for this. So we're not shipping food across the world. It's literally in my backyard. 
right? Grown by me. Or I'm probably going too far already. But feed me food convenient for me. Why? So observe, interpret, apply. Why? It says, lest I be full and deny thee, saying, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. What an amazing statement. This guy who's just questioned, like up in verse 4, he's just questioned who is God and what do I, you know, what's his name and who do I care? And then all of a sudden in verse 9, he's like, lest I be full and deny thee. And say, who is the Lord? If I, if my belly, if my belly is full, I'm not too interested in a lot of other things. But if I'm hungry, I'm, I'm pretty motivated. And he's saying, like, if, if I'm overfilled, I might ignore the Lord. Or if I'm so poor, then I'd be tempted to steal. And to take the name of my God in vain. I don't want to do that. Taking So would you ever cuss? Would you ever you know, use your mother's name as a cuss word? The answer is no. Why? Because you care. You respect your mother. You, you wouldn't do that. And so here, taking the name of God in vain is, is doing just that. It's taking the name of a holy God and using it in an unholy way. I don't need to get into that much more. Accuse not a servant of his, of his unto his master, lest he curse thee and thou be found guilty well i've got some technical difficulties that i'm working out so we're just going to jump ahead to verse 16 the grave and the barren womb and the earth that is not filled with water and the fire that saith not it is enough fire always wants to burn more right as long as there's fuel there's fire and sometimes we can put that in our lives like if i was going to apply that if i want to pick a fight i'll look for fuel Right? I'll create a situation where I, I need to fight with somebody. And, and if I don't want to fight, there will be no fire. The, the, that battle will not continue. All right, let's continue on. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pluck it out and the young eagles shall eat it. This is really an interesting. If you are disrespectful to your father and your mother, it doesn't say that they need to be good fathers or mothers. You could have terrible parents. They could be wretched, horrible people. Have done terrible things to you. And it doesn't matter. Because what matters is that if you're mocking and despising, you mock your father and you despise your mother, God's promise is that the ravens of the valley shall pluck it out and the young eagles shall eat it. That your flesh, your dead body, is going to be fed upon by animals. Honestly, that scares me. That's that's scary, right? And I shouldn't be motivated by fear. I'm I'm reverence. I I love God, and I love that He warns me. Like, if hey, if you step out of line, this is what's going to happen. Well, that's cool, right? Like, that's like having a, a warning instead of getting a ticket. This is your warning. Slow down. Here you go. Honor your father and mother. Got no problems. Contrast mock and despise them you got big problems so that's i love my mom and dad i'm gonna i'm gonna honor that all my life verse 18 there will be three things which are too wonderful for me yea four which i knew not the way of an eagle in the air the way of a serpent upon a rock and the way of a ship in the midst of the sea and the way of a man with a maid that's that's a, like a virgin right it's a married man with a with his wife now, these things are they're said to be, they're wonderful, and I don't understand them. And I'm, I may not understand them. Right? We're, we're, it's very interesting, the way of an eagle in the air. You know, one of the things that jumps out at me here is that baby eagles learn to fly by getting chucked over the nest and falling. And the mama eagle drops down and, and literally catches them on her back and flies them back up to the nest and this falling this free falling that they go through and then rescuing before death that is an amazing anomaly of nature right god designed it that way the way of this eagle in the air that's what i think of the way of a serpent on the rock how do the serpents know that if they stay on the rock they will gain heat and they'll be able to move actively through the day how do they know that the way of the ship in the midst of the sea, like, 
who knows how to control that? And in fact, in, in Psalms, we're, we read that there are these pathways through the sea, right? These, these pathways that take you through the ocean, that there are currents of water, like rivers, flowing in, in the ocean, right? And if you follow them with a ship properly, a, a good captain can use those currents to carry the ship wherever he needs it to go. What an amazing thing. In the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth up and she wipeth with her mouth. Let's uh, move on a little. An adulterous woman, she eateth and she wipeth her mouth and she saith, I have done no wickedness. Man. So adultery is when you fornicate, you're having sex outside of marriage. You're actually having mar sex with somebody that you're not married to. This is adultery. And a woman who's in this way, men do this too, so don't think this is one-sided. This is not. But this woman in this case, she says she she does this deed. She She's adulterous. She eats, she wipes her mouth, and she says, I've done nothing wrong. And how bold is that? How, how sad is that? To be so lost that you don't know the limit of your own sin, right? The limit of what you've done and possibly the families that you've destroyed because of, of a, this temporary moment of gratification that will, it will fleet away and, and, and it's worthless, right? No good relationship starts this way, not ever. Verse 21, for these things, the earth is disquieted and, and for which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat, so a full fool. For an odious woman when she is married, that's a hateful woman, a woman who, she's just, you, have you met people who are just bitter and angry? So this odious woman when she's married, she is not honoring, she's unloving toward her husband. Now this can go the other way, there can be I, I, wicked men too. But the, the focus in this moment is, is on this odious woman, right? And so a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. So it's like a servant saying, you're going you're gonna to be raised up. You're going to be lifted, elevated above your, your master, which is weird. That's like Joseph in Egypt. So that's a story you can go read by yourself. There be four things which there are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants, which are people not strong, and yet they prefer their meat, that's food, in the summer. So the ants store up food for the winter all summer long. Who taught them to do that? Right? Like, God designed it in them that this is the way that you're diligent. This is what you need to do. You don't have to worry about what vacation you're going to take. You just focus on whatever food you're going to collect. Right? That's That's amazing. So let's move on to verse 26. Conies, which are a feeble folk, conies are rock badgers, and yet they make their house in the rocks. So they're, they're silly little guys. Actually, they can climb trees too. So when I, when I was in Israel, I, I saw these rock badgers literally like resting in the branches of, of the, the trees in En Gedi. It was, it, it was crazy because they're very uncoordinated. They, they're not like, you know, agile little monkeys or something. They're they're, they're like big fat prairie dogs, grofers, you know, ground squirrels. They're just, they're ridiculous. But they make their houses in the rocks, and that's interesting. The locusts have no king, and yet they go, they go forth, all of them, by the bands. The spider takes hold of her hands and is in the king's palaces. Now, I love this verse, verse 28, because the spider, so what does it mean, or what is it saying? A spider, it spins a web in the king's palace. Now, you and I, like, let's just say in America, the king's palace is the White House. I will never get to go in, like, to the point where I could build a, a web, build a house in the White House. It's just never going to happen. It's not, not part of the vision in my life, right? And probably that's true for almost everyone. Very few make it there. Yet, these little spiders, they can go in and they build their little webs in the king's place. Like nothing can really prevent them from entering, right? I mean, 
it's just interesting. So do with that what you may. Verse 29, there are many, there are three things which go well and yet four which are comely in going. A lion, which is the strongest among the beasts and turneth not away from any. The boldness of a lion. They're not afraid of anything. A greyhound and a he-goat also and a king against whom there is no rising up. And if thou hast done foolishly, lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Now, everybody knows you just, you're like, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, right? You just, you do this naturally. And here God's outlining it as, as a reaction. So God knows everything. He, he created us. He knows everything. I'm going to move myself down here. Verse 32, if thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, then just cover your mouth and say, hey, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Surely the churning of milk and bringing forth of butter, this is work. And the ringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. Well, that's interesting. So the force, forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Well, I don't want wrath in my life. So number one is don't go the wrathful way. Right? If there is any other way, choose love. If there's any other option, choose love. We'll go back to verse 5. If any, every word of God is pure. He's a shield to those that put their trust in them, in him. So I want his protection. He is my shield. I need that. And if I force wrath, I know I'm going to have strife. I'm just going to be frustrated and struggle with things. And I don't want that. But if I lift up God and I say, God, I know that you're in control of everything. So I'm, I'm reading personally. I'm reading through Job right now. And it's just interesting to recognize how honorable Job was. His character was impeccable. His nature was was such that God bragged about him. And everything that happened in Job, we know the backstory for. Right? Job was an honorable guy, and he had a lot of terrible things. His whole family was destroyed. All of his wealth was destroyed. All of his health was destroyed. He had nothing. And his wife decided to say, why don't you just curse God and die? That's kind of a tough gig, right? To be married to that woman, that's tough, right? I've been... De, you know, Johnny Downer, where everything is sad and gloomy. And, and it's just not, that's not the spouse that you're supposed to be. And actually, it's interesting that I say this because Proverbs 31 is all about what a godly woman is. And I would say also, as the bride of Christ, so everyone, men, women, everyone, as the bride of Christ is to treat Jesus the way that this Proverbs 31 says about women. But we'll get into that tomorrow. I'm super excited that you joined me today. I'm hopeful that one of these 33 verses has jumped off the page, that it's sprung into your heart, and then it gives you this little flicker of light, this little excitement that you want to take away and say, you know what? I don't know what that guy has, but I want it. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's what that is. That's a love for the Word of God. That's, that's a love for Jesus that makes me sure I'll go to heaven when I die. And because I can hold that in my heart, all other things can fade away. He is a shield to those that put their trust in him. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this reaches you and teaches you and mends you and that you'd be sent to go and do the good work of the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. God bless you.